E.G. Marshall. There are parts of the countryside which wake each day to a morning mist which has settled thickly during the dew-falling night. Through it, the trees have a waiting look. Hills seem to be further off than they are. Cattle look motionless as they graze. White farm horses move and turn in slow and stately unison. Everything is waiting for the sun. You don't know me, right? Am I right? And I don't know you, correct? Yes. Well, then, why is it? Now, I'm asking you in all seriousness, you understand? I understand. Why is it? I'm so crazy in love with you, I... I think I'm losing my mind. Our mystery drama, Out of the Mist, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Russell Horton. I'll be back shortly with Act One. starts to thin out, begins to rise from the ground. Each horse and cow stands in clear outline, and the pasture where they browse shows itself for what it is. Country people call this process burning off. It means the sun has gone to work. The story we bring you now is called Out of the Mist. I'm crazy about my motorcycle. It's a road bike, fast and light. Great off-the-line acceleration. I love it. The uh, other thing I love is the country. I never even saw the country till I was 19. And if it hadn't been for my bike, I might have lived my whole life without even knowing it was there. My name is uh, Harry Steers. I graduated high school and went right to work in the garment district with the idea of working up the salesman. I might have made it if I hadn't bought my bike. I started riding out of the city on my day off. I saw trees, all kinds. I saw animals, big ones, little ones. I saw fields of corn and clover and daisies. Most important of all, I met the old man. He was standing in front of an old white house, trimming a head. He looked to be about a hundred years old, <laughs> but I found out later he was only ninety. Hi there. Oh, good morning. That's a nice-looking hedge. Well, what do you call it? Yeah, it's private. You're not from around here, are you? Uh, no, I'm from the Bronx. And they have privet in the Bronx, too. Are you interested in privet? Not especially. I'm interested in everything about the country, everything that grows out of the ground. You know, I never knew that carrots lived under the earth. <laughs> They grew on bushes. <laughs> Never thought about it at all. Those carrots were just something in the supermarket. If it wasn't for this baby here, I might never have found out. I oh, you mean a motorcycle? Yeah. Well, uh, nice talking to you. Yes, it was very nice talking to you. Hey, uh, listen, do you know uh, there's a flower? Uh, I, I guess it's a flower. I, I see it along the side of the road a lot lately. A, a fantastic blue color. Oh, that's chicory. Chicory? No, no, that's not chicory. It's not. No, chicory's what my grandmother used to put in coffee. Well, she was using the root of the domesticated variety. which you see along the road of the wild chicory. The bloom late summer. Well, I'd like to take some back to the Bronx. Oh, I'm afraid you couldn't do that. Wildflowers don't like to be transplanted. They like to wander, follow their impulses. They don't wish to be told what to do, where to go, where to live. They want to be free to roam, take up residence in a spot of their own choosing. How about that? And they will brook no interference. Hmm. Well... Hey, I have to admire their spirit. I do. I, I admire it. Well, uh, you want to be on your way to the Bronx. I guess so. But uh, if you're ever up this way again, stop by, huh? Well, I'll do that, though. I'll certainly do that. Uh, goodbye. And don't forget... <laughs> what 
changed my life. Put its mark on me forever. A little talk with an old man about privet and chicory and carrot. And an invitation to come back. I could hardly wait. If I'd known what would come of it. But I didn't know. And I was having the time of my life. I bought a paperback and I started to learn about wildflowers. Purple loose stripes, sink foil, bee balm, butter and eggs, vervain. I went crazy. I couldn't wait to see all those wild things growing out of the ground. On my very next day off, me and my bike stopped off at the old man's house. Hi there. I'm back. Remember me? Yeah, of course. The young man who's interested in chicory. Yeah, and that's not all. I bought a book. You see? I carry it around with me all the time. Oh, I have several books on wildflowers. Would you care to have a look? Hey, would I? Uh, uh, now? Uh, come inside and I'll get my housekeeper to make us coffee. Or uh, would you prefer a drink of some sort? Oh, anything at all. Uh, listen, uh, Mr. Uh, um... uh, Bell. Calvin Bell. Uh, what do you know about hollyhocks? Uh, a little. It's very difficult to raise some seed, although I have succeeded from time to time. Most people buy the seedlings. Here we are. Uh, Miss Peters. Mrs. Peters. Uh, yes, Mr. Bell. We have a guest. Well, now, that's nice. Uh, this is Harry Steers from the Bronx. He drove up here on his motorcycle. Is that so? We'd be obliged to you for some coffee, Miss Peters. I'll see to it. Very pleasant meeting you, Mr. Steers. Well, the same here, Mrs. Peters. Sir, uh, there's something in the book. It's called Bee Balm. I see it along the road some. Great shade of red. Some people have tried to domesticate it and call it bergamot. But I don't hold with that. I don't care for the whole idea of taking wild things and taming them. I let to leave things alone. Let them wander the earth as they please. Same thing with animals. I can't. Tolerate the thought of putting animals in a zoo for people to stare at and to laugh at and sometimes tease and feed unnatural things to which can make them sick. Sometimes it seems as though man has a morbid desire to get his hands on everything that grows and do something with it, twist it, turn it, take it apart, make it into something it isn't, something different, more to his personal liking. M Mr. <laughs> Bell, you shouldn't get yourself all worked up. Uh, no, 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 I shouldn't. You're quite right. After all, I'm 90 years old, you know. Oh, you, uh, you could have fooled me. Uh, uh, look here, if you're so interested in wild things, if you really like the country... Well, I am, I, I, I do a lot. Well, why don't you move up here? Forget about that Bronx place. Move in here with me. I got a big house. There's plenty of room. Well, what would I do? I, uh, could I work around the place, maybe? Yeah, hey, listen. I'm about 20 miles from Seneca. That's where the university is. I'll enroll you there, and you can study to become a botanist. What do you think of that? Well, it'd cost money, you... Well, I couldn't sell my bike. No, no, there's no need, no need. Keep it. Do you know, Mr. Steers, that there are wildflowers which are endangered? Trailing arbutus, bitter bloom, all the trilliums. Well, you mean endangered like, like wild animals? Precisely. Endangered species. The bluebell, the nodding wake robin, the cardinal flower... The butterfly weed. City people come for a drive in the country, and they think it's great sport to pick the pretty flowers. Of course, the little things die within the hour, but what do the predators care? Harry, there are laws, laws on the books against picking endangered wildflowers. Well, 
with your bike. You could police these people, the hunters. Arrest them? Yeah, track them down, report them. Or just tell them to stop and tell them why. Sometimes they'll cooperate if they understand. Oh, I guess I could do that. Yeah, sure you could. Protect my wild beauties. Yes. I'm too old. I can't go out on the roads and the highways. But you can. What do you say, Harry? Come on, indulge an old man. Uh, will you, Harry? You're very hard to say no to, Mr. Bell. Here's your coffee, Mr. Bell. Say yes, Harry. There's cream and sugar if you want them. Wait a minute. I'm going to fetch some superlative brandy. It's been in the cellar for 20 years. And today is the day to open it. What's Mr. Bell so wrought up about? Oh, uh, just an idea he's got. Something to do with his precious wildflowers? Yeah, that was part of it. Hmm. Wanted you to help him save the poor, helpless thing, hmm? Sort of. Um, Mrs. Peters, he wants to put me through the university. Well, if you go to the university, you'll see a painting of Mr. Bell hanging in the front hall. A fine-looking man in his 20s. Tall, handsome, strong-looking. He came into a pile of money when he was young, and first thing he did was give half of it to the university. To the botany department, I'll bet. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why they hung his picture in the main hall. But now, well, he's an old man, and he has notions. His mind wanders a lot, remembering things, I suppose. Which seems very okay to me. Yes, well, I just thought you should be told. I did it. It was a chance I couldn't pass up. I moved in with Calvin Bell. And come fall, I signed up at the university majoring in botany. Every morning of my life, I walked to the main hall and saluted the painting of Calvin Bell as a young man. Mrs. Peters was right. He'd been a great-looking guy in his day. Better than six feet tall with bright brown eyes and wavy hair. And he was a nice old coot now. Even if his eyes were dim, he walked with a stoop and most of his wavy brown hair had fallen out. We got along fine. Actually, everything was just about perfect. Till I met that girl. Well, even that was good at the beginning. The trouble came later. The wild flowers are disappearing. The animals are becoming superfluous. There are those who think that the entire countryside will one day be smothered by lofty apartment buildings, huge shopping centers, and enormous parking lots. The entire earth will be man-made, and God's work will be only incidental. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. I'm Susan Anton. Johnny Jump Up or Chinese Candles? Will they know or care that these were flowers that grew freely with no help from man at all? Will it matter if they never have a chance to see an eland or a kudu or a dick dick? Probably it will have no significance whatsoever because they cannot know what they have missed, what civilization has 
stolen from them. This is how I met the girl. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, and the mist hadn't even begun to lift. It was a wonder I saw her at all. She wasn't riding a thumb. She was no hitchhiker. She was just standing there on the far side of the rise that goes over the old abandoned single-track railroad. I was already late for my first class at the university. I, I can't imagine what made me pull up. You, uh, you oughtn't to be standing out in the middle of the road like that. Why not? Well, you could get run over. Oh, I don't think so. Boy, oh, I could have run you down with my bike just now. See, there's a rise here, a, a little hill where the road goes over the old railway. I always give it the gun not to lose speed and then sort of flip over on the other side. Evil, evil stuff, you know? <laughs> uh, that was uh, supposed to be a joke. Oh. Well, I, I don't know why they don't level off this stretch of road. The, the railroad stopped running years ago. I don't even know where it went to. To Miller's Ridge. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't know that. Yes, it does. Why, it would if it was running. Yes. Uh, you know what? I, I've uh, never been to Miller's Ridge. Uh, I, I've heard of it, but I, I've never been there. Oh, it's, it's just a post office, really, and a few houses. I used to live in one of those houses. Yeah? Before I went away to school. Hmm. Uh, well, I, I uh, better be getting to class. i got an exam coming up. Uh, nice talking to you. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you. And uh, remember what I told you about not standing in the mist like that. Wait till it burns off if you want to come a ride. You wouldn't want to get run down by a bike, would you? A bike? A, a bike. A, a motorcycle. This baby here. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, better get on the stick. This exam is very important to me. I'm uh, studying to be a botanist. That's nice. That's very nice. Concentrating on wildflowers. Gee, I'm from the Bronx, New York. I'm hung up on wildflowers. How about that? I think it's nice. Oh, you see that? You see that? Mm -hmm. That is Queen Anne's lace. No, it's not. It certainly is. It's yellow. No, that's Queen Anne's lace. Look at it. You know, you're right. It's yellow. It's hard to tell unless you're close up. They do look alike. But Queen Anne's lace is, is pretty, delicate. Yarrow is, well. Like, uh, more coarse. More coarse, yes. You. You look like Queen Anne's lace. Me? Yeah. Pretty and delicate. You'd better get on to your class at the university. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd better. See you again, I hope. You're not going to believe this, but I was in love. I was in love. I was a whole different person entirely from the one I did. It was nice, it was good. I felt like I wanted to be kind to everybody all over the world. I'm telling you, I sailed right through that exam. The questions were so easy, I had to laugh. The professor looked surprised when I was the first one to hand in my book. But I tossed it on his desk, flashed him a smile, and swaggered out. All I wanted was to get back to the girl in the mist. Only, there wasn't any mist now. It had all burned off by noon, the way it always does. But there she was. I came back. Yes, you did, didn't you? I hoped you would. Oh, what have you been doing all this time? Oh, just wandering around. Looking for wildflowers? Some of the time. Anybody try to pick you up or anything? No. You want to be careful of that kind of thing, you know? Why? Why? Well, the way things are. Don't you read the papers about what happens? Or... I don't read the papers. Mm, all kinds of things happen. But then, uh, you weren't looking to be picked up, were you? I don't think so. What, um, what were you looking to do? 
I wanted to get to Miller's Ranch. Are you going to walk? I guess so. You want to see your family, is that it? And or are you married? I'm not married. Not yet. Oh. That's good. It's your family you want to see, right? I just... I just want to see the house. And because I used to live there. Oh, you're sentimental about it, right? Oh, yes. Very sentimental. Mm, I can emphasize with that. I really can. I was born in a terrible house. A really awful, dinky, unattractive. But I've always thought that when I make some money, I'm going to buy that house. Gruesome as it was, I'll never really forget it. Well, this house isn't gruesome. It's pretty. Well, um... What do you say? You, you want me to take you there? Would you? Oh, I'd do a lot more than that for you. So, um... Hop on! Right here. Now, if you kind of hitch up your skirt... Oh! I'll be wearing jeans, but that... Uh... Oh, oh, my goodness. That's scary. That's how you jump a bike. Uh, uh, come on. Put your arms around my waist. Should I? Well, you know, if you don't want to fall off, you should. Uh, that's it. So, off we go into the wild blue whatever. you want to see? You keep going until you see a big oak tree. A really enormous one. Oh, there it is. See it? Oh, yeah. It must be 900 years old. You go left just beyond it. There's a dirt road. Dirt road? I didn't know they had those anymore. Right here. Turn left. Uh, gotcha. Hold on. You keep going a little ways. The house will be on the right. It's a very small house, but I'll know it as soon as I see it. Oh, there. There it is. Little white one? Yes, that's it. Shoot. That's cute. Ah. ah. There's your house. Well, um, what now? You've been so nice. I hate to ask you, but would you do one more thing for me? Well, I guess I'd do anything for you. Would you ask the people in there if they'd let me come in? Just to, just to look around, sort of. Well, why don't you ask them? I'm afraid to. They don't know me. Well, they don't know me either. I, I don't know them. Well, you come right down to it. I don't really know you. I, I don't even know your name. It's Anne. Anne Campbell. It's a pretty name. Anne Campbell. I'm glad you like it. Good. Oh, and, and that's a pretty house. You know, I, I, I like all that um, fancy stuff. Makes it look like a valentine. Oh, all that fancy stuff is carved out of wood. Live and learn, right? <laughs> Carpenter's Gothic. That's what they call this kind of house. Mm. Looks like lace, you know? They used to call it the lace house when I lived here. And Campbell of the Lace House. Queen Anne's Lace House. <laughs> You're teasing me. No, no. No, I'm not. You look like a queen to me. A little young queen. Well, are you going to ask the people if I can come in? Yeah, I, I guess so. It's important to me. Well, uh... Then I'll do it. Now, uh, you stay right there. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Uh, anybody home? 
I don't know if there's anybody home. Please try. I is anybody home here? What do you want? Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, Who are you? Uh, well, uh, my name's Harry Steers. I, I, I live with Mr. Calvin Bell, the old gentleman that now, had... what are you doing here? Uh, uh, it's not for me. I, I got somebody with me. She used to live here. Oh, well, and, plenty uh, of people used to live here. Plenty. Yeah, and she'd like but to... But not uh, for long. To, to come in. Uh, they all move out. If, if you don't mind. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, move out. <laughs> She slammed the door in my face. I felt terrible. Anne must have heard the whole thing. I wanted to put my arms around her and hold her and tell her not to mind. We'd come back some other time. But just as I was figuring out what to say and how to say it, I looked at the spot where I'd left her, and she wasn't there. She'd gone. road. I asked everybody I could find. Had they seen a young girl? Nobody had. Finally, it was getting dark, and I got on my bike and went home. I went right up to Mr. Bell's room. I knew he'd be lying down. He always did before dinner. I didn't even knock on his door. I went right in. Mr. Bell? Uh, uh, Harry! Excuse me, but I, 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 I gotta tell you what happened today. You passed the examination. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, sure. But, uh, uh, Mr. Bell, I fell in love with a girl. Now, I, I don't, don't laugh. It's a fact. Oh, I wouldn't laugh. I picked her up on my bike. She, she wanted to go to Miller's Ridge. Miller's Ridge? Yeah, to visit a house there. She used to live in it. <laughs> It's the prettiest house you ever saw. Uh, they used to call it the Lace House, she said. The uh, Lace House. Yeah. Now, the girl, her name is Anne. Anne? I call her Queen Anne of the Lace House because she reminds me of Queen Anne's Lace. So soft and dainty and... And um, <laughs> I love her, Mr. Bell. I want to marry her. And I'm going to... Bell? Dinner's about ready, Mr. Bell. Uh, I, I, I think he fell asleep, Mrs. Peters. I, I've got the table all set. Oh, my. Oh, my. He, he isn't sleeping, Mr. Steers. He's dead. Times have changed. Not many people stop to pick up strangers on the road anymore. And I've noticed that people seldom strike up conversations with strangers these days, pass the time of day, or exchange pleasantries. For that matter, you hardly ever see people smile at each other anymore, unless they know each other pretty well. Yes, times have changed. And it's sad. I'll be back with three shortly. Walter Cronkite, one of a kind, writing, editing, working with the superb CBS News team to gather and report the news. Let's tell the tale. The Daily, constant pressure of being the best. And there's only one place you can find this anchor man, this editor, this team. Good evening, Dr. Strong, but Cronkite and Company, only on the CBS Evening News. Monday through Friday on the CBS Television Network. our lives. And with fear comes suspicion. With suspicion comes hostility. And when hostility takes over, violence is sure to follow until peace and trust are things of the past, lost to us as though they had never existed, as though we no longer know what they mean, what they ever were. Very 
freedom, a lawyer came to the house and read his will. He'd left his house and a bunch of money to Mrs. Peters and something I certainly never expected, quite a few thousand dollars to me. Mrs. Peters said she'd sell the house eventually, but till she did, I could certainly go on living there. And so I did. And I kept on going to the university to learn about wildflowers. And every morning on the way, I looked for Anne. And every afternoon on the way back, sometimes I think I saw her coming toward me out of the mist. Other times I'd look down at that old single track railway and think I saw her standing on the roadbed or sitting on the slope to one side or the other. But I never really saw her. Not even on my way home when there was no mist and I could see everything quite clearly. One day, I took it into my head to go to the lace house at Miller's Ridge. There was a sign in front of the house and it said, For sale, Agent Nicholas Vaughn. I went to see Mr. Vaughn. Yes, sir. Are uh, you Mr. Vaughn? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, I want to see about buying a house in Miller's Ridge. Oh? Any particular house you have in mind? A little white house, uh, Carpenter's Gothic style. Someone told me it used to be called the Lace House. Yeah, I believe it was once called the Lace House. Charming place. Needs a few things done to it, but it's certainly... Where anything it needs, I'll have it done. I, I want it. Well, aren't you curious about the price? Well, I've got a little money. Uh, Calvin Bell left me some money. I'm Oh, I'm Harry Steers. Oh, yes. Well, the house has been empty for some time now. I want it. It's had quite a few owners. I'd have to inquire about the asking price. I want that house. Uh, Mr. Steers... Naturally, I'd be pleased to make the sale. Do you mind telling me why you're so set on buying this particular house? I want it. Well, frankly, Mr. Steers, that house has been, well, sort of a jinx. Everyone's enchanted with the house when they first see it, but once they've moved in, they take a dislike to it. They tell strange tales about strange goings-on. Like what? Oh, sobbing in the night. Restless footsteps on the stairs. Did I know what I was doing? No. I just went ahead and did it. I moved into the house and waited for something to happen. It's true, I did hear very strange noises sometimes. Like slow, heavy footsteps. And a kind of crying sometimes. Low, strangled sobs is what they sounded like. No. 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 But none of these things bothered me. They were a kind of company for me, because I was lonely, lonely and waiting. Then, one morning, I was riding my bike to school, and all of a sudden, out of the mist, Anne, Anne, it's you, it, it is you, isn't it? Hello, Harry. Well, it's, it's been almost a year. Almost. But you look just the same. So do you. Do you know, I, I've been looking for you every morning, every afternoon, too. Uh, sometimes I thought I saw you, but I never did recently. <laughs> I saw you. You did? Well, why didn't you ever stop me? I don't know. I <laughs> I just can't believe finally after all this time. Uh, look, uh, you still want to go to Miller's Ridge? Oh, yes. To the lace house? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. Okay. I'll take you. Hop on. Will I be able to go inside? You bet you will. Are you sure? I'm positive. You know why? No. Tell me. Because it's my house now. Really? You mean it? <laughs> I bought it. Why did you do that? Oh, I don't know. I, I thought maybe I'd find you there, I guess. Nah, no, nah. No. 
Uh, that's not it. I, I, I thought I'd find you somewhere, like, like here, standing in the mist, and I, I'd take you to the house, and, <laughs> and I'd take you inside and tell you how much I love you, and then uh, we'd get married. <laughs> All set? Yes. So, off we go into the wherever. I felt when I pulled up in front of the lace house, helped her off the bike, and led her up to the front door, took out the key, unlocked and opened it. Her eyes opened about a mile wide when we stepped into the front hall, and then she started running all over the place, touching everything. She'd think I'd led her into paradise. After a while, I left the house and went over to see Mrs. Peters. I don't know if Anne even knew I was gone. Why, Mr. Spears, and how are you? You're looking splendid, I must say. That's what I am, Mrs. Peters, just splendid. Oh, pardon the mess around here. I, I sold the house, you know. Oh, no, I, I didn't know. Oh, yes. Mr. Vaughn got me a real nice price for it. Oh, but my heavens, cleaning out all that stuff that's accumulated, you've no idea. All that clutter. Well, it wasn't like Mr. Bell to throw anything away. Oh, true, a word was never spoke. Well, now, and you. How are you getting along in your, your little lace house? Well, uh, that's what I came over to talk to you about, Mrs. Peters. Oh, now, you're not happy there. What is it? The ghost's been bothering you? Not a bit. I always thought that was a lot of talk. Mrs. Peters, when I bought the lace house, I didn't really know exactly why I was doing it. Mm, got it cheap, that's what I figured. I... I bought it for a... Um... For a girl. A girl? Yeah. <laughs> Why, Mr. Spears, I didn't even know you had a girl. Well, I didn't. I, I, I mean, I, I just met her on my way to the university, and then one more time on my way back... That was almost a year ago. She wanted to visit the lace house. She used to live there, so I took her. Mm -hmm. But the woman who lived in it wouldn't let us in. Screamed at us, as a matter of fact. And, and when I went back to speak to Anne, to sort of comfort her, she was gone. But Mrs. Peters, by that time, I was in love with her. I, I mean, in love, really in love. Well, for mercy's sake... Tell me about it, my gracious. Oh, she's she's just wonderful, Mrs. Peters, like like um like a wildflower. Young girl. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's young. Family? Oh, I don't know. She didn't say. Never been married before. Oh no, I, I don't think so. Well, long as she loves you. Well, she didn't exactly say that either. Well, now don't you think, that... oh, Mrs. Peters? I love her enough for both of us. And and when I talk about the wedding and everything, oh, oh, I, I, <laughs> it's what I want to talk to you about. The wedding. Oh, oh, I love a wedding. Now, will you come to it? Oh, you just try and keep me away. And if you'd sort of help uh, plan it, you know, I think Anne would appreciate it. Oh, that's her name, huh? Anne. Anne, Anne, Anne Campbell, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, we thought, uh, well... I thought we should sort of rehearse it. I mean, isn't that usually what people do? Well, I believe so, yes. Yeah. We could do that this afternoon, if that's all right with you. Mm -hmm. This is the anniversary of the day I met her for the first time. A year ago, September 15th. Mm -hmm. And today, the same day, one year later, I meet her again. <laughs> it just seems, well, appropriate. So is, is it okay with you? <laughs> well, I guess so. Yes, it's all right. Uh, Thank you, Mrs. Peters. I hope you're doing the right thing. I, I really hope you are. Now, I think the minister should stand here in front of that fireplace. Now, let me pretend I'm the minister for now. Harry, Harry, now you stand on my left. Now, I think that's correct. Right, okay. And, uh, Anne, Anne, w would you like to make an entrance down the stairs? What do you think? Whatever you say. It's such an informal wedding. Uh, maybe if you just come in from the dining room, how would that be? All right. And uh, you walk up to the fireplace and stand just, uh, just to my right. That'll be the minister's right. Y you want to try that? Dear. All right. 
right. Now, the door from the dining room will be open just as it is now. All right, dear. Now, you come in now. All right. That's it, dear. Now, stand right about there, and then the minister starts to say those beautiful words about being gathered here in the sight of God and so on to unite this man and this woman in holy matrimony. No. No. No! A voice came from the foot of the stairs. I looked up, and so did Mrs. Peters. But Anne was already looking at where the voice was coming from. She was looking at... Jada Rowland, Carol Titel, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant of damage, but apparently no serious injuries after an earthquake in the Imperial Valley of Southern California. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. 
The earthquake registered 6.4 on the Richter scale. Most of the damage is said to be in the Imperial Valley of California near the Mexican border. Marilyn Tyson describes what happened in her factory building near El Centro. It started out just with a little tremor, and then it just got intense. It was just terrible. And we, uh, all the pots in our office, uh, you know, the plants broke. We had about 60 of our workers in the yard uh, getting paid off, and they just panicked. They just ran every which way, and it lasted, oh, it couldn't have lasted more than 20 seconds. Some people 200 miles away in Los Angeles felt the shock wave. The CBS employee, Frank Moreno, says there was no doubt that it was a major earthquake. A strong rolling motion seemed to uh, start, and uh, I was sitting at my chair opening uh, envelopes when all of a sudden I felt a, a very strong movement. I uh, turned around and saw the plant swaying, and all of a sudden I, I heard the uh, ceiling here at the uh, CBS building start to creak. Officials say as many as 70 people were slightly hurt. There's an unconfirmed report of one person killed in Mexicali, Mexico. Officials say it was the strongest earthquake in the Imperial Valley since 1940. More CBS News in a minute. I don't think we should be up here. Why?